PowerPoint alignment is something that most people know how to do in one or two ways, but there are so many other ways for different scenarios. For example, getting all these shapes to distribute and align exactly. Or when things are different sizes, like images or shapes as well. Aligning across slides, this can be really tricky. Um, aligning in a grid formation like this. So I'm gonna go through a lot of these things and I'm gonna whistle through it because I've got a lot to cover. My name is David and I'm and I have tons of videos that I make on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. Subscribe to my channel and give me a like button if you like what you see. Let's get started. So in this first example, we're going to use PowerPoint's align tools. So I'm going to select all of these objects. Now you can use this lasso select, but you need to make sure you cover the whole object. So the one on my right is not gonna be selected. I can control click to select it. Then if you go to arrange, you have a line and you can choose here, a line top, for example. You can also choose distribute horizontally like that. This is the most um, basic one, but it's really, really, really good. And I love this one so much. I use it 10 times a day when I'm using PowerPoint. Next one is not quite a line, but we're going to need to resize all of the rectangles. So for this, click on one, go to shape format and just copy this one. Memorize the other one, 4.43, go here and paste and then 4.43. Fortunately, you can't copy and paste both of them, but you can get to it this way quite nicely. Great. So that can get all of them going like that. The other one you can do is you can also select one and you can align, you can choose align to slide, which is default for that one. And then align center will put it in the middle of the slide. Align middle will also put it in the middle of the slide. You can even select both of them and choose align to slide and then align middle. And then they will both be in the middle of the slide. So that could be a faster way to get to that one. It's not one I use very often. I usually just use the first one. So another one you can do, if you like this format, you can select these three and go to group them. And then you can align them when they're grouped. And then this will give you those options there. You can even select it like this and then align to selected objects. And then align top will align them as a grouped object. So grouping and ungrouping, especially with the shortcuts, control G to group. Control shift G to ungroup can be a great way to do things very fast with alignment. So let's do the same now with images. With images, you also have the arrange tools for sure. All of these are still the same, but if you want to resize them, it's best not to drag them or change the size. It's best to crop them. And I tend to do a crop to aspect ratio. So for example, 69 is one that I often do. And then you can drag it by holding shift and then it stays in line and then do this to the same one, crop to aspect ratio 69. Some of them will already be 169, so you don't need to do it, but there you go. Can be a really good one. Click out when you're outside of it, and then you can just use the same trick of copying and pasting one size into another one. It should keep the aspect ratio, so you don't need to do it for height and width like that. Number four, when you use placeholders, then you have this button called reset that will put things back the way they should be. So placeholders are, if I put a new slide, this one and this one, or depending on the layout, I have different arrangements of placeholders. Now, if you move things like that, or like that, or like that, or even actually if you change the colors, then, or here you change the text color to make it red, let's get rid of design ideas, then over here, if you press reset, it will bring them back to how they were. And that brings us to the next one, which is, let's say you want to align across all the slides. You want to align the title for every slide to be in the center. Now, the way that these layouts are created is through the slide master. So if you go to view, you get this thing called slide master. The layouts represent each individual node, but the top one is called the slide master. So click on that one. I won't go into too much detail about that, but what you can do is you can click on the title and then you can go to the home tab and choose to align that in the middle. Uh, for argument's sake, you could also choose to change the color to whatever color you want, like this. And if you go back to the regular mode, you can see that all of these are now aligned in the middle. Now that's 
really good, but what about if you want to align across slides, but not in placeholders? So there's a couple of tricks to do that. Um, the first one is if you copy and paste, then it maintains the position. So if I click on these objects, for example, these are all images I got from PowerPoint's stock images here. So I select them, copy them, and then I paste them in another slide and they will maintain that exact same position. So that is a trick I use, believe it or not. But let's say that you want it to be a little bit more sophisticated than that. And I want this shape to be exactly where this one is in a different slide. It's not a placeholder, it's a shape that I just inserted from here. So what you can do is you can click on the source one, which is this one. You can go to, I have PP tools and I can memorize it. And then I can click on this one and I can click on the hammer icon and then it puts it in the same position. There are other more advanced things you can do. You can go to options and you can say resize as well. Press OK and you can memorize it and then go to even another completely different object like this one. And you can choose to hammer that in and then it will make it the same dimensions, not the same shape, but the same dimensions. Now you can get this hammer tool or the Thor tool from by downloading it. It's a free PowerPoint add in. So if you go to this website, pp2tools.com, or you search for Thor PowerPoint tools, then you can just download it for free and start using it. I've used it for years, and I think it's really, really fantastic. It's made by a PowerPoint MVP Echo, who I also know. This one, I want to keep a lot of these, but keep them aligned. So you click on one, and then if you hold down control, you can create a duplicate like that. However, if you hold down, let me exit out of that for now. If you hold down control and shift, you copy it and also keep it aligned like this. So you can do that again here and then hold down control shift and drag them very, very fast to make duplicates like that pretty fast. So you can go even further than that by using the duplicate trick, which a lot of people don't know about. This works on any object. If you duplicate with control D, then you move it immediately. And what it does is it memorizes the position where you did it from. So control D again will grab it in new directions there. And as well as the keeping it in line, it also keeps equal spacing between them, which I couldn't quite get with this one, equal spacing. And the other benefit of this is it's the only way to align when you are not doing it specifically vertically or horizontally. So for example, I can have this tilted, I can duplicate it, move it like that. Something that's not very easy to do in PowerPoint. Then Control D will just keep creating the same one like that. Align to be a part of the image, another challenging trick. So let's say that I have this and I want it to actually align to be somewhere over here. So I don't want to align to the bottom of the image, I want to align somewhere over there. So what you can do is you can create a line, uh, hold down shift to make sure you have a horizontal line. It can be approximate for now. Let's make it black and let's make it a bigger weight so we can obviously see it. Or rather let's make it gray so we can see it in all contexts. And then just drag it to exactly where you want to align it like that. And then you can now align both with the smart guides, these red lines, and also just select both objects and arrange align, align bottom, like that. So that is how you would align to a part of an image. Also works with icons or other things like that as well. Uh, smart guides. So smart guides are these red lines that kind of pop up depending on how you do something. You see them as you resize when it tries to measure equal spacing. You see them when it tries to measure spacing inside to align that to another one. There are lots of ways that this works. Now, what I find very annoying though is that sometimes it jumps quite a lot when you try to do it and you've got a lot of objects. So I hold down the Alt key and then you move and you can move it freely without those smart guides. So that's how you can temporarily disable the smart guides. Uh, you can also turn on the grid. So if you go to the view tab, 
you have these options here. If I go to grid lines, it will show me the grid lines like this. And now I can sort of use things to align to them. I got to be honest, I don't really use these very, very often, but it is definitely a thing. And things do sort of a little bit snap into place in some of them like that. Next, you've got, if I switch that off, you've got another thing you can do in the view tab, which is guides. Now guides, you can turn on or off. And these are the guides, how they are. You can, if you want to move them, but you can also add new ones by right clicking and adding a horizontal or vertical guide and moving that to wherever you want. So if you always want, for example, your logo or something to be down here, you can add the vertical guides there to indicate that this is where it goes. It's actually quite, could be quite useful to indicate where a projector would cut off the edge of the slides. So you don't wanna see them. And then these will help you align things as well. So if I actually align these using align bottom, it will jump like that. But really what I can do is I can select these and I can go to graphics properties and I can convert to shapes. And then I can just press the ungroup I shortcut control shift G and it will do that. You can actually do that two times. So you can select them, go to control shift G once, twice, and then it does it. So we don't want to do this because this will bring the wheels up there. We in fact want to group these again, control G and control click those and align top. Next, you can align in a rectangle layout, align them both across and down by selecting a bunch of text, going to the home tab, convert to smart art, this tab. And we're gonna choose this specific one, the first one. This will align them in a rectangle. So you have new items, it will go like that when you have an, e an odd number. And even if you drag it across, you can get it showing you in a three by three, in a three by three formation, or it is responsive to whatever layout you set up like that as well. So this is the basic block list. You can navigate it or change it from the text pane. You can also insert SmartArt directly without converting by usually first type things and then convert it. And like I had with the icons, you can also ungroup it twice, Control Shift G, and that will create separate objects and then you can move them around freely. So let's say I've got all of these images of different sizes showing different things. Again, I got these from the stock images. Then I have the descriptions there. I can actually lasso select all of those and then go to picture format and I can choose a picture layout. So I can choose, for example, say one of these. And what it does is it's pretty interesting. It actually puts them in kind of a grid formation again but it allows you to um, have the text as well next to it. The way to get the text is pretty easy. You just kind of cut the text over there, place it next to the relevant one. It's easiest to edit from the text pane on the left. And then you just kind of backspace there. And then you've got it very clearly like this. And if you rearrange it, you get it in all sorts of distributions. It's effectively being responsive to whichever layout you have. Again, with these, you can ungroup it you can choose convert to shapes and then ungroup, or you can control shift G two times and then get individual shapes and be more flexible with them. And finally, you can use design ideas. So if you have lots and lots of images, you can just click on design ideas on your home tab only with Office 365. And then you can get all of these possible arrangements. So if I don't have a text box and I choose my layout to be blank, and it will show me these ones in a different way. If you have 11 objects, then design ideas will not give you something. But if you have 10, design ideas does work. So it works for up to 10 objects, but giving you designs in kind of weird ways. So aligning text, you're probably very familiar with these, but you have shortcuts for it. Control L for left, R for right, E for center. Some of my favorite shortcuts. You can even select multiple and press Control L will do the one that I'm pointing to, Control R for right, like that. Or you can also just align them vertically, top, middle, bottom, like this. Uh, and you can also arrange in multiple columns. So if you click on this button, you can choose one or two columns. And notice that even if 
you don't need the space to go into two columns. It still sort of splits it halfway. I'm sure you've realized that as you start typing, it eventually just resizes it. Um, these text boxes have preset adjustments. If you right click on them and choose format shape, you can go to text options and then this button. And this is where some really important stuff is. So do not auto fit means it doesn't do that. Resize shape to fit text means that the shape keeps resizing. Uh, in other shapes, then it might be a different one. So this one is do not auto fit, but resize to fit is like that. Also, another kind of nuance that you sometimes have with these shapes is that for some reason, there's not equal amounts between the margins. So what I generally do is, again, go to here and here and choose zero in both of them. And then you'll be sure that it puts it in the middle however big you are. So I'm going to insert an icon and by default they insert in black so you can't even see it there, but I'm just gonna choose this style. And then I'm also going to draw a circle. Key trick for drawing a circle, hold down shift as you draw it and then it's a complete circle rather than an oval. So put it in there. And I'm going to send to back, right click and then click on both and then go to the home tab and arrange a line center and arrange a line middle. So if you want to make this look in this vertical formation, a couple of ways to do it. You can firstly just resize it and then it will work if you make it slim enough. Or you can use the official way, which is click here and choose stacked and then resize it. Note that it sometimes needs adjustment, so you can use your shortcuts to make text smaller. Um, the other options that you see there are rotate in different directions like that. Well, there you have it. Were there any that you learned that you didn't already know? Give me a comment down below. And also stay tuned because I've got more videos on this sort of thing and lots of features in PowerPoint, Power BI, Excel, Zoom, Teams, SharePoint coming up very soon. Thanks for watching.